Welcome to Regional Insights on California CEO. I'm Jeff Allen. A quest for sustainability was the theme at the recent Future of Cities 2015 conference presented by the Western Regional Council of Governments and the UCR Center for Sustainable Suburban Development. The conference held at Riverside Convention Center brought business leaders, policymakers, and educators together to discuss challenges and solutions in planning for the future development of the region and its communities. A wide range of topics were discussed, including economic development, urban planning, renewable energy, and conservation of natural resources. The subject of greenhouse gases and their effects on the climate and people's health was also presented, along with an update on how well California is doing to reduce carbon emissions by Bill Higgins, Executive Director of the Council of Association of Governments. I had a chance to speak with him, and here's what he had to say. Very important in this day and age, really, the, one of the, the key subjects we hear about in the paper all the time is the importance of greenhouse gas emissions. How far have we come and how far do we have to go? Well, we've come quite a ways. If you think about a ship turning, clo uh, big ship turning in, in, a, in a tight radius, it's a slow motion action, but the most important part is getting started. And in the last five years, California has done a very good job of, of redirecting itself. But we still have a long way to go. As, we, as the discussions today kind of alluded to, there's a 2020 goal, which is the same as what we did in 1990. But the larger goal is to reduce our emissions another 80% over that by 2050. And that's what the science says needs to be done in order for our um, for our climate to balance. But this is, is more, though, really, isn't it, Mr. Higginson, just a, a balancing the climate. But this is really, it goes beyond that. There are health issues involved here uh, as well. well. Well, there's health and, let's not forget, economy issues and economic issues. The uh, city, and I think the purpose of this conference is to talk about the city as a sustainable unit in which to live. <laughs> Uh, we provide a lot of infrastructure, sewer, water, but police, the fire, schools, a lot of that can be uh, more efficiently distributed in a city environment, particularly when we think about that as a goal. Greenhouse gas actually correlates with another of, a number of other important goals like health um, and, and, and that, that make it compatible. But we also have to think about it in terms of jobs because, you know, an economic living and having the ability to provide the basics is also an important part of sustainability. Where do the changes have to come from? Is this something that is going to involve the individuals, is going to involve taxpayers, business owners? Who makes the changes and, and how are they made? Yes. I mean, that's the short answer. If you're going to reduce your emissions 80 percent, I mean, and that's what the state goal is, that's going to take change from everybody at the business level, but also at the personal level. And it also requires a policy structure that will advance that. Reducing greenhouse gases requires buy-in from all communities, and that's what the Western Riverside Council of Governments is aiming for with its Climate Action Plan. Rick Bishop, Executive Director of the Council, explained the Climate Action Plan this way. Well, the plan is, is in response to state and, and regulations requiring local jurisdictions to work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, we received some money from the state's Strategic Growth Council to put together a sub-regional climate action plan that would help local jurisdictions highlight many of the things they're already doing uh, and promoting uh, the kinds of development that will improve quality of life in Western Riverside County, but also to help achieve the emissions reductions that the state is calling for. It, it, and affordability was actually kind of a second question I wanted to ask you about because we understand that there are funds that are available for these types of programs and it really all kind of depends. There's a lot of planning that goes in, in, into it. Uh, is this something that can be afforded and something that can be accomplished uh, based on the, the full scale of the plan as it looks right now? Yeah, I think so. There, there's a lot of money that is coming from the state and federal governments that are encouraging local jurisdictions to think about and incorporate sustainability measures uh, into their local planning processes. And so our Climate Action Plan was 
was a, an effort to uh, be able to do that, to incorporate measures that local jurisdictions already have in place, but also to recognize that there's things that we can perhaps do better to become a more sustainable Western Riverside County in the future. Can you reveal some of the components of the plan? What do they include? Well, the plan has a, a wide range of measures that local jurisdictions can choose to take. It's not a, it's not a requirement, um, but things that would really improve the quality of life uh, to residents and future employers in Western Riverside County, increasing uh, bikes, bicycle parking, increasing active transportation, uh, making communities uh, more walkable uh, you know, by, by having jobs being closer to residences, things of that nature. So it's a lot of measures that uh, we're seeing are being desired by millennials, uh, young people that are the next generation of home buyers, and there are also measures that are being more and more desired by the baby boomers that are looking to downsize from the single family home to perhaps a different kind of living arrangement. New programs like Star Communities work with cities to help them achieve benchmarks for sustainable development and improved quality of life for their residents. I caught up with Hillary Varnador, Executive Director of Star Communities, to discuss the program and the advantages of certification to a city. Sure, we're a DC-based nonprofit that works to evaluate, improve, and certify sustainable communities. We were established really because we built the Star Community Rating System over time and needed an organization to administer it. Star is the first framework and certification program for local sustainability in the U.S., and it enables local governments to measure their performance across social, economic, and environmental areas. Give us some idea about how widely used Star is right now in the country. Okay, sure. So um, the rating system itself was released in the fall of 2012. At that time, we brought on 31 pilot communities to test the rating system, evaluate how it worked and our programs and services, the tools they needed to be successful. Um, since that time, we have almost 100 communities in the U.S. that are using STAR um, formally. That represents now over 40 million residents in the communities that, you know, are those. And uh, about we're about 25 certified communities at this point. What is the benefit to a city and municipality of being certified as a star community? Well, there's certainly recognition opportunities. So many communities that have taken a lot of action um, already would like to see, okay, so let's get recognized for all the great work we've done. But mostly it's about, okay, we've done all this, these, taken all these actions, taken all these steps. Have we actually gotten toward the outcomes that we should be working toward? And STAR really helps you see of the actions that you've taken, are you getting to the right, are you getting to the, the outcome, the condition at the community I level that really is going to affect change? So communities certainly want to do that. They need a, no community that we've worked with yet already has all of this data together in one place. So really doing a comprehensive baseline assessment across social, economic, and environmental areas, having it in one place that internal staff and boards and commissions can have access to. If your mayor needs talking points, you can jump into your STAR report quickly and get that information to then use um, in the public. Um, so, you know, for a lot of communities, it's about recognition, about understanding, like, where they are so they can go forward in the right direction. Um, those are a couple of, of areas that communities are using it for. And how exactly are communities doing in their urban sustainability efforts overall? That's what I asked Julia Parson, a renowned sustainability consultant and invited keynote speaker at the conference. Of course, there's a lot of work to be done, but one of the things I'm always surprised about is how much cities are already doing. One of the places that really does need to change is to start accounting for what cities are doing and quantifying the progress they're making. There's so many reasons cities are pursuing sustainable communities to make, you know, to attract um, new skilled workers, entrepreneurs, to beautify. And what needs to change is to bring all that together and develop a vision for what a community will look like and how to keep it adapting to change. So a lot more going on than people think. No, I, I, I completely understand that. And I would imagine that there are so many moving parts and considerations to make. And this is something that could probably only really be pursued by a, a large team of individuals in a community. Where do you find is the best place to start? Where do your clients look to start in their efforts to, to kind of bring this vision or plan this vision before they can bring it to life? Yeah, well, you know, historically, um, cities have managed more and more problems and they've developed departments to do that. Things have gotten very compartmentalized. 
And I think what's happening now is cities are seeing they can come up with better solutions if they decompartmentalize, if they break down the silos. So often where it starts is with someone in the mayor's or city manager's office whose charge is to find the connections between what people are doing around health, housing, energy, transportation. Um, these kind of integrated approaches are very hard for people to do. They're so busy, they're driven by their daily um, performance goals, and if you bring someone in whose job it is to really make connections, they can start to see the benefit of it because they find cheaper ways to do things, um, more benefits so that they can draw on more resources in order to get things done. So you need someone who is that role of change maker. So we, we see that there can be some individual distractions there, there can be some departmental distractions there, but, but overall, if there's a plan that is in place in, and there are benchmarks and there are goals to be set, what are some of the most significant challenges uh, uh, in your experience that uh, cities are facing and counties are facing in trying to meet these goals? Right. Well, I, I want to point to two really big ones. One is most of the action does happen on the ground at the city level, but a lot of the pools of money are at the state level. At the conclusion of the Future of Cities conference, California CEO publisher Dwight Cromie had a chance to speak with Ron Loveridge, the director of the UCR Center for Sustainable Suburban Development and principal architect of the conference. Dwight began asking Mr. Loveridge what he had hoped the event would accomplish. Well, the effort really was to frame sustainability uh, not as a kind of idea, not as a... Uh, something that uh, is distant, but to try to frame uh, sustainability as who we are and what we need to be in the future. And uh, I thought the, the conference did it. I mean, we went from uh, the, uh, the, the national look to the state look. Uh, we began to see what individual practices are. But I think out of that came the realization that uh, we're in this sustainability together. We need to figure out how to do it. And it's, uh, it's, it's no longer simply a, a discussion topic. It needs to be a strategic action direction. But I, I, after this conference, I'm particularly interested in not simply city sustainability, but sort of regional sustainability. And maybe some this performance metrics that doesn't simply focus on what is Cala Mesa doing or, you know, or, or, or what is... Channel Hill's doing, but rather in focusing on what's happening to the region. And so by measuring what we're doing together, I think it integrates conversations. And, uh, and I think the result of that will be a, a, a place that we can have much greater pride in. My own action step after this would be to see, uh, I think, uh, this question of the star rating system of whether or not uh, W. Arcog and Sandbag could take it on as a, and, uh, and then maybe f help facilitate cities to engage this. But I, I, I think uh, we, we can't wait. It's not waiting for Godot. I mean, waiting for everybody to line up I think we have to sort of create some leadership, and I think it has to be at the uh, at the, the regional level. And this this area has so many resources and so many assets. And uh, uh, I would like when people think of inland Southern California as an example of sustainability. And and uh, I'm afraid now too often they see us as a place where we have a bankrupt city and uh, and warehouses. And we need another. Uh, I think a way of thinking about us. And if we can indeed be a sustainable place. Uh, that both the judgment of outsiders and insiders will be much different. We hope you enjoyed this story and we look forward to bringing you more like it in the future as we continue to work toward our goal of creating economic opportunity and prosperity for all who make their home and living in the Inland Empire. We invite you to support our efforts by advertising on our website or sponsoring our programs. To reach us, visit the contact page at californiaceo.net or call our office directly at 951-697-3098. With regional insights on California CEO, I'm Jeff Allen.